Hi LEGO Mindstorms and LEGO Technic fans, I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms and in this video I'm going to show you an FPV car, that's a first person view car that I built with uh, two LEGO Technic hubs, you can see these are simple uh, Technic hubs and um, an OpenMV camera and of course um, uh, if for FPV you need a uh, you need goggles so for goggles I used uh, this uh, drone mask so uh, it's a simple lens actually and you can fit a smartphone inside and once it's open your phone fits inside and it can receive the video stream from the uh, camera over Wi-Fi um, so with these relatively simple and inexpensive components um, we can have a first person view or FPV experience with a Lego car. Let's have a look at the components. First we need a car of course. This model is a simple model. The instructions are on my website. What's really nice about this car is that um, it's got a differential gearing here and it goes relatively fast on a simple Technics motor here and it's got some gearing on the steering wheel so you can do more precise steering so you see here that the uh, steering gear is geared down for precise steering so this is a very nice balance of uh, speed and agility and it's also a pretty simple model to build but of course um, you can build your own car. If you like this uh, video and if you like these, this model, uh, feel free to download uh, the building instructions on my website. Um, apart from the car, we need a camera. I'm using the OpenMV H7 camera, which had been hard to get for a while, but I believe it's back in stock. And um, there is also an upgraded version of this camera, the OpenMV RT, which is a bit more expensive but will work as well. Um, the, this is a very nice camera because um, it can do some artificial intelligence, some image processing on board, none of which we will use for this video because we will simply uh, pack it with a Wi-Fi shield. So this is an add-on shield that you can buy for this camera and you simply slide it on like this and then um, all of a sudden this camera can stream its image over Wi-Fi, which is the capability that we're looking for here. And uh, finally, um, uh, there is this board. It's a board that I designed especially for the OpenMV camera here, but it's also usable for um, adding your own electronics, any electronics to uh, your uh, LEGO Technic or LEGO Mindstorms hubs because this is breaks, basically a breakout of the basic uh, LEGO wire. We are not going to communicate very much with the OpenMV camera and the Technic Hub, although that's technically possible. I'm just going to use the wire to power on the camera so we don't need to drag around an extra battery pack. So let's connect all of this. Then I built a simple remote control. It's another Technic hub. I flashed both of my hubs with the Pybrix firmware to develop a very simple program that reads motor positions of steering and throttle and sends them over to the car. Finally, uh, my smartphone goes into this drone mask, which is a lens and phone holder. Um, let's boot it all up. Um, if you like this t-shirt, you can buy it online. I designed it myself uh, just for fun uh, because I wanted one and maybe you want one too. So uh, if you want one, you can get one uh, through my website. I have different designs. I'm a fan of uh, MC Escher. So I try to make this impossible Lego buildings. And if you think those are funny, uh, be sure to get a t-shirt. Now we can simply power up the Technic Hub on the car here and then the OpenMV camera starts a web server and in my smartphone I can use my browser, I'm using Chrome in this case, 
to uh, go to the IP address of the camera. It's all on my local Wi-Fi network and you can see it starts streaming and you can see the, the lag is very limited. So when I close my hand, it almost closes in real time on the camera, which is very neat and which is pretty hard to achieve on a Wi-Fi camera. So the streaming is uh, working here. Um, what's left is uh, putting the camera into the goggles here. So let's put everything inside and close this up. Then um, we need some code here. Um, the camera or the camera is connected to the car and the car goes in uh, goes into receiver mode. So when I start the car program, it calibrates the wheels so it looks where the um, end of the mechanism is and then uh, finds that and returns to zero. Now it's listening to Bluetooth commands and we can simply start up this Technic Hub and uh, start the program and then um, you know we have throttle control here and we can steer the car like this. Um, you can see here that the steering is just a little too laggy for my taste so um, it works but it's just not real time so this is something that we will have to improve on in a further model uh, I would like to uh, remote control this car with a gamepad uh, with less lag and uh, not dependent on the um, slowish Bluetooth connection between these Technic hubs what might also help is um, using a Mindstorms hub as one of the two. Uh, the Mindstorms hub is a bit more powerful, so this could also speed up the communication. Let's uh, try that in another version. For now, let's drive. Now let's have a quick look at the code. The OpenMV code is pretty straightforward. I just used the standard uh, example that comes with the Wi-Fi shield and I added some code of my own. The code that I added is mostly this bit here and it uh, makes sure that the OpenMV camera poses as an official LEGO sensor which um, enables it to get power. So there is this power is true parameter here at the uh, sensor for the sensor class and this ensures that the camera and um, the interface boards gets uh, 8 volts of power from the LEGO hub uh, which is then converted to 5 volt which is needed for the Wi-Fi shield because the Wi-Fi shield uses a lot of power and it doesn't work with the default 3 volt that comes um, from the LEGO hub. So on the sensor side I changed some settings from the default program I set the sensor to WVGI. This is nice for phones. It's a wide version of VGI. It's a lot of pixels and it, the frame rate doesn't take much of a hit. Then I used flip and mirror which results in a 180 degree rotation of the image which is necessary because the camera is mounted upside down on the model. Then here, of course, you ha will have to add your Wi-Fi network and key. I deleted mine for the video, of course. And then the rest of the code is very much what OpenMV provides. I didn't change anything there. Now let's switch over to Pybrix. Um, this is the code that I used for the car. The car code is very simple. It just defines the hub uh, which is necessary for Bluetooth reception here. So we tell the hub to observe Bluetooth channel 0. Then we initialize the steering motor by running it until it's stalled, resetting the angle and then running it back to 0. And we define the drive motor. Then we go into an infinite loop where we check out the numbers that come through Bluetooth. This is either a tuple of two numbers or none. In, and when it's none, we uh, change the none 
responds into 0.0, .0 so this line always evaluates correctly and then we have two values throttle and steer we can put the steer value right into the um, motor for steering and the throttle value uh, it's just a DC so we just set the power of the motor to the throttle value both numbers are between minus 100 and 100 and that's uh, built in the transmitter code so the transmitter code is a little longer um, we first define the motors and here we define the maximum voltage for the motors that's because we are building a virtual spring inside the motors and by limiting the voltage we actually configure the spring power so this uh, to, I think default is 8000 and um, by making this number 2000 we limit uh, the force to one fourth of the normal motor power then we have some helper functions here to scale the values to create a dead zone so when the stick is almost zero it makes it really zero so there is no creep there and we have this limiting function which limits a number between the floor and the ceiling so it's a clamp function so once we have these helper function um, we go back in this infinite loop again um, here we uh, make sure that the motors try to go to zero so this is the virtual spring by doing track target zero and then we read their um, angles all the time and we scale the angles from the uh, original angles so if you push the steer as far as it goes it go moves about 75 degrees and we translate that to minus 100 100 and we have an 8 degree dead zone on the motor so everything between minus 8 and 8 becomes zero same goes for the throttle uh, where the throttle motor only moves 25 degrees we translate that to minus 100 100 also and there is also an 8 degree dead zone finally once we have the values for steering and throttle we transmit them over bluetooth and that's it um, very simple code receiver transmitter and camera well thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video in my next video we will build an upgraded version of this system um, with uh, two cars so um, i can race other people and uh, i'll also build a different remote control system with a gamepad so the control is more direct and um, racing is actually more fun so i uh, hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching bye bye